Hey everybody, today we're back at uh, Redeemer Lutheran Church here in Fresno, California, where we're doing our Rogers Wicks hybrid organ project. Now last week we got the old console out, brought the new console in, got all the speakers hooked up so that the digital organ will work as a standalone instrument. And now we're going to interface the pipe organ into the digital console. So the way that works is we have this data line coming in from the console. And basically what this handles is a relay signal and a two-way MIDI signal that has had its current boosted so that it can run over a long distance. That data has basically everything that the console does. The keys, the expression shoes, crescendo pedal, pedals, uh, the stops, all of that. And that data comes into this. This is the Rogers Pipe Integration Manager. The data comes in to the bottom here and then we have several chains of data decoders that we can utilize. The whole system is programmable. So the data runs out as a multiplex signal onto this driver card and what happens is it's just doing it in sequence and so we run several of these cards together and I think we can put up to 512 data points uh, in a chain of decoders and we can run up to four chains on a single PIM unit, pipe integration manager unit and of course we can daisy chain the pipe integration manager units so that we can uh, run everything that we would want to run. Now in this case um, each of these cards has 64 points, we can run them together and we can do this a couple of different ways. So these cards will run uh, about an amp and a half, maybe a little more per data point. Uh, then there's a total load limit per card and in most cases what we do if we're dealing with like an electro-pneumatic action we'll just hook up so that we have every pipe valve on a separate uh, separate data pin. If it's a Pittman chest where it's set to have note and stop uh, we would run each note each stop. In this case we're dealing with a direct electric organ. Now that means that the valve doesn't have any pneumatic assist in it. It's strictly the electric solenoid that opens the valve and lets the air into the pipe. In an electro-pneumatic, of course, you would have a small magnet that would ventilate a leather pouch and thus getting pneumatic assist in opening the valve to let the air in to make the pipe sound. Direct electric valves, especially when they get big enough to handle larger pipes in this chamber, take a lot of current. Now the load limit is significant on these cards. I think it's like, you know, like I said, it's about an amp and a half, maybe a little more per note, but we also have to think about the total load that the entire card will take. Some of the direct electric valves in this organ are very large, and looking on the existing relay, there are some significant signal amplifier uh, circuits on there to have provide enough current. The existing relay is a Peterson relay, it's already connected to everything in the organ. It's going to do everything we want it to do. So in this case, we get to do a really simple interface in which these decoder cards are just going to deal with note and uh, stop signaling as if we were hooking up a Pittman style straight wind chest. And uh, that way we, can, we only need to use three of these cards and uh, we'll use the relay to do its job. That way we make absolutely certain that we have enough power to run all these pipes indefinitely off of our digital console. So this is a very cramped space and the lighting is really not great. So let's see if I can get in here and show you this. So we have our Peterson relay. And the way it works is the key signal comes in to the front end of a card and then all of these are basically stop switches that then route the keying information out to the appropriate pipes according to which stop switches are on or off. And then once those are summed up, since this is a unit organ, we're going to have several stops for principal and 
the you know the principal will be at eight four and two and the flute will be at eight four and two and so forth all that is summed up up here we have our driver cards now these have uh, normally Peterson driver cards use using a transistor array IC chip if they're running a regular electro-pneumatic chest. In this case we have a high powered uh, amp uh, signal amplifier circuit on every pipe and then up here I can't really get a good camera angle to show you this uh, for the biggest pipes, the biggest valves in the organ They've got these huge amplifier transistors like you'd see in a large audio amplifier to get enough power over to those valves. So the way we're going to connect up the PIM and the driver cards is the driver cards will be plugged into the key point and the stop switch points. And then we'll program the PIM to run those from the particular stops on the organ console we want. The end result is that the organist just sits down and plays the organ. When we do a hybrid organ, we want it to be seamless. We don't want to have like, okay, here's a group of electronic stops, and here's a group of pipe stops, and we got to think about how, no. You just sit down and play the organ. Some of the stops are pipes, some of the stops are digital. The whole thing is coordinated as a single unit system. You just sit down and play and make beautiful music. So earlier this week, we got all of the hardware installed for the pipe interface system on our new Rogers Wix type hybrid organ. And today what we're going to do is we're going to connect up all this wiring. Now the first thing we have to do is uh, get the console connected to the PIM, the Pipe Interface Manager. So we have a cable here. It has three shielded pairs. You can also use a cable that is just uh, set up as a single shield uh, three plus three pairs. That'll work just fine. So we've got our wiring from the console connected to our pin connector. And we have several circuits here. We have our relay circuit to turn the pin on and off from the console. Then we have our transmit and our receive so that we have two-way communication between the PIM and the console. And that plugs into our console input. Boom. Then, to go out to our decoder cards, we have a three-pin connector. Connects onto a chain here. And I'm using a basically low impedance audio cable. So we have a pair of wires and a shield. Now the reason that's important is for the shielding. We're sending a digital signal. We have thousands of times a second we've got pulses going through this signal. And those pulses can be disrupted by radio waves in the air. We don't want that. So shielding takes care of that by providing an outside path to ground so that if a radio signal comes in and bombards this, it's just going to go to ground, dissipate, and then the digital signal can continue on uninterrupted and uncorrupted. And this is true in any uh, such setup. The other thing that connects to the PIM is our temperature sensor. Now this is set up against one of the pipes in the chest and it reads the temperature of the pipe and then the tuning of the digital organ is coordinated with the pipes. What happens in a pipe organ is as the temperature goes up and down, the air density changes, and the pipes change their pitch. And they tend to do this all together. So the pipe organ stays in tune with itself, but its overall pitch is high and low depending on the temperature. Now in the old days we used to have to have just a knob on the console and if the pipes were going up or down we'd have to manually adjust. Now it's all automatic. The temperature sensor is connected again to the PIM, another one of these connectors into a special location. So that's why we need the two-way communication. We have our notes and stop information coming into the PIM. We have information from the PIM including the temperature sent back to the console so that the digital stops uh, can be 
tuning-wise coordinated with our system. So now we need to just connect all of this stuff up. So with our line coming down from the PIM, I'm going to go ahead and use these wire tracings that are in the relay system already. Come up here to our first location, and then I can trace them. So this will connect to our input here. Then our output for the first decoder will then loop over to the input of the next. The output goes to the input of the next. So that sets it up as a continuous chain. And the scanning for the multiplex signal is from first to last, first to last. And it does that several thousand times a second. It's also scanning at the console so that it knows which thing to send off. And so that's really how your any computerized system works. It's actually only handling one thing at a time, but it's handling them several thousand times a second, so it can handle in a very short period of time a multitude of events. The other thing we have to hook up here is power source to our decoder cards because these will be driving the relay and in other circumstances they would directly be driving the chest magnets that make the pipe valves open. So what we want to have is a connection to our DC voltage which is supplied to the organ valve system. And I'm going to use this wire, this is a 14 gauge so it will handle the current very nicely and each card will get its own home run, as we say, uh, all the way back to our DC power source. And those will also be traced through the existing wire traces to make it nice and neat. Okay, so now we've got our power feed, an individual run from our 12 volt source, down to each of the driver decoder cards. Then we have our data stream coming in from the PIM, out to the next card, out to the next card, so everything's in just big one series. So next, what we have to do is set up for connecting all of these outputs over to the appropriate inputs on the existing Peterson relay system. So what, what it is, it's kind of a, like a knife edge thing and you shove the wire down in between the two blade pieces and it cuts into the insulation and then grips the, uh, the conductor inside and then I go over here and then it's a regular twist connection. So this is cabling that is, this type of cabling is often used in uh, like telephone systems. And you can get this in, in this case I've got 12, six, 12 wires, six pairs. So color coding, uh, there's actually a couple of different ways to do this. Um, now, the telephone company apparently has its, its other thing. I was working with a guy one time and, and he was explaining this primary and secondary color system and it uh, quite frankly didn't make any sense to me. Electronic components use the color sequence as it would appear in a rainbow. And you can use the acronym ROY G BIV. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And so you would start with uh, black, brown, ROY G BIV, gray is the way I I've, I've was taught to do it. And uh, I'm sure somebody out there who does it a different way can say, well, no, 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 that's not it. Well, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is that the wire on pin number one here is the same wire on pin number one here. So here's how it works. You just set the wire in the slot, 
shove it in there. I can trace it on around. Strip a good amount off the end here. corresponding pin over here. And this is the neatest tool I ever ever got. It's a wire twister. And you shove this in here. Stick it on the pin. Boom. And believe it or not, this tool I got it for a job I was doing down in Southern California. This thing cost 300 bucks, and having done this kind of work, a lot of this kind of work, it's worth every penny. Okay, so we've got our wire connections all pressed in on our decoder board. And they go through the existing wire trough and come out on the junction board. It connects it to existing relay system. So now we just need to do two more. <laughs> okay so here we are looking at the inside of the new console and this is our connection between the console and our cable which goes out to the pipe interface manager inside the chamber. So this is our cable, which goes into the chamber, and we just have to connect to this. Essentially what this is, the pipe controller, is it uses the MIDI protocol, and so we have basically two MIDI lines, one for send, one for receive. We also have a relay line, which remotely turns on the pipe organ by turning the PIM on and off. The PIM in turn then triggers the blower and the organ's rectifier and all of that. Now, we're, so we're using three shielded pairs, one for each of the circuits. We've got our, our transmit, the green and black will be our receive, and the white and black will be our relay. And these are shielded pairs. The wire has a bare wire that runs down the length of both each pair, and then each of the pairs is wrapped in foil that we've uh, peeled back. So the first thing is we gotta get these kind of in order here and then we'll just twist all the shields together. And that's it, that's all you have to do. Seven wires going into the console and from the console over to the uh, pipe chamber. Our decoders all hooked up connected to the existing relay. They can also be connected directly to the pipe valves. Then all we have to do is tell the PIM how to translate the data the console is sending over to the data that the, uh, we want it to receive on the other end. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting my work here on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with everything that's going on. Also, pay a visit to my new artist page on Facebook. It's Tony I, the Organ Guy. You can also connect with me on Patreon, where you can get exclusive Patreon-only content. All of those links are in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.